exotoxins. These are the toxins that are produced by gram bacteria, both positive and negative. These are the proteins that are made inside the bacterial cells. In contrast to endotoxins, they are found inside the bacterial cells. These proteins are made and they are excreted from the cells as compared to endotoxins which are released on the bacterial cell destruction. Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about exotoxins. In my recent video, I've discussed about endotoxins. If you have missed that video, find its link in the description or in the top right corner. Before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Exotoxins are fatal as compared to endotoxins. Lower concentrations of exotoxins are fatal, while the high concentrations of endotoxins are fatal. Lecture outline, we have talked about exotoxins introduction. Now we'll be discussing about the ways that exotoxins can cause damage and the ways they can be categorized. This is the type 1, type 2 and type 3 exotoxins. And then we'll be discussing about the bacteria who are responsible for releasing exotoxins and which exotoxin is released by which bacteria. We will discuss that in that section. And after that, we'll discuss a few examples of exotoxins. And at the end, as usual, we'll recap the lecture. Exotoxins affect the host cells in three particular ways. Type 1, type 2, type 3. This is the most easy way to categorize them. Let's look at this diagram. Let me grab a pointer. This is the bacteria that is releasing the exotoxins, that is making exotoxins inside it and then releasing that. There are three types of exotoxins, type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 exotoxins. These are the toxins that act as super antigens. On its release, two cells, the APC, the antigen presenting cell, and the T cell will interact. Because super antigen is something that is foreign. Um, exotoxin is something that is not normally present in our body. So when it will be entered, that is a foreign particle. So our immune system will be activated against it. So we will, we will be having the cells like antigen presenting cell, for example, dendritic cell and the T cell, that's the lymphoid cell. Interaction occurs through MHC2 and CD4 molecules. Exotoxins acting as super antigens will bind onto this connection. Super antigen enhances interaction between the cells as a response to that. T cell will release massive amount of cytokines, for example, interleukin 1, interleukin 2, tumor necrotic factor alpha, and interferon alpha. Cytokines will in turn increase the inflammatory response because cytokines are responsible for increasing the inflammation, so they will increase the inflammatory response. This is how type 1 acts as a super antigen. Now let's talk about the type 2. Type 2 exotoxins exert their effects by directly acting on the cells, by damaging it. The damage to the cell can be by putting pores in it, which can lead to leaking in and out of the material and the damage to the cell membrane, which means the breakdown of cell membrane. This is the direct cell damaging effect. Now let's talk about the type 3 exotoxins. This is the most common one. It insert AB toxin having alpha and beta units. We were talking about that. This pink one is that one and it attaches onto the receptor, this is the receptor, and is transmitted into the cell. There is a bacteria named Yersinia pestis. It has got an injectosome that transfers its exotoxins into the bacteria. And then these exotoxins inserted in the cell will exert their effects by a second messenger system. Effects can be inhibiting the protein synthesis or modulating or altering the activity of enzymes and proteins inside the cell. As we've talked about the three different exotoxins that how they cause damage to the cells and now we will be talking about the bacteria that are responsible for releasing these toxins. First we'll talk about the type 1. Uh, there are two bacteria that are responsible for releasing type 1 exotoxins. First one is Staphylococcus aureus. It releases two antigens. And these two antigens are toxic shock syndrome toxin type 1, TSST1. 
And the second one is enterotoxin. These exotoxins act as super antigens as we've discussed about its mechanism a bit earlier. The second one is streptococcus pyogens. It releases erythrogenic toxin that is responsible for causing scarlet fever. Let's talk about the bacteria that are responsible for releasing type 2 exotoxin. The first two bacteria are similar to type 1 but the third one is different. The Staphylococcus aureus will be releasing leukocidin, that is Panton Valentine leukocidin PUEL. The Streptococcus pyogen will be releasing streptolysin, and the third bacteria, the Clostridium perfringens, will be releasing alpha toxin. Bacteria that are responsible for releasing type 3 exotoxin. Number one is Carnibacterium diphtheria. It is responsible for releasing diphtheria toxin. Here I've got a tip for you that every bacteria has got a name of its toxin in its own name okay for diphtheria toxin you can see cornibacterium diphtheria so you'll add diphtheria and toxin so it will be its toxin next we have pseudomonas aeruginosa it has got exotoxin type a aeruginosa starts with a so type a like that you can memorize it then we've got shigella it releases sugar toxin. Then we have got Escherichia coli. Its toxin is somewhat different than the name that is sugar-like toxin. Then we've got Vibrio cholera. It is responsible for releasing cholera toxin. And then we've got Bacillus anthracis. It releases anthrax toxin. And Bordetella pertussis releases pertussis toxin. Clostridium tetani is responsible for releasing tetanospasm, that is a neurotoxin, and Clostridium botulinum is responsible for releasing botulinum toxin. It's time to talk about the examples of different exotoxins. Let's start with type 1. Cephalococcus aureus, this one, the purple bacteria in bunch. This is responsible for releasing the TSST1 toxin, the toxic shock syndrome toxin type 1. Um, you might be thinking what can be the reasons for it release so it can be released in the situations where something is left for in long time in our body for example nasal packings tampons left in for a long time and lap pad left after surgical procedures this tsst1 acts as a super antigen as it is a type 1 toxin so we've discussed about the mechanisms of the toxins so in type 1 they were responsible for damaging the cell by acting as super antigen so this will act as a super antigen and as a result when it will act as a super antigen between the antigen presenting cell and the t-cell t-cell will be releasing massive amount of cytokines like interleukin 1 interleukin 2 tumor necrotic factor alpha and interferon alpha cytokines will do what they will act on the brain a specific part of the brain that is hypothalamus that is a part of the hypothalamus is responsible for regulating our body's temperature, so there will be an increase in our body temperature leading to fever. Another thing that these cytokines will do, they will act on our skin by increasing the temperature, by giving redness, so this is called rash. The third thing they are responsible for doing that they act on blood vessels, they cause a vasodilation and increase capillary permeability that leads to hypertension. As we've completed type 1, um, let's talk about the type 2 exotoxins. Um, there were three bacteria that were responsible for releasing type 2 exotoxins, but I've taken Clostridium perfringens here, which is releasing the alpha toxin. This bacteria can get into our bo body via skin cuts or wounds. Let's talk about the alpha toxin. What is it responsible for doing? It has receptor on various cells in our body. For example, muscle cell or skin cell. It binds onto these receptors. This is the receptor. It does something really cool. It activates a protein called phospholipase C. The PLC that is an enzyme and which is responsible for doing something really amazing I'll talk about this in a moment and there's something else this PIP2 this is a molecule that is incorporated in the cell membrane this PLC will break down this molecule PIP2 into two into DAG DAG and IP3 this will lead to the destruction of cell membrane DAG will activate a protein kinase C, PKC. This PKC will activate particular types of transcription factors. These transcription factors will activate genes. And you know what genes will produce? They will produce some 
awesome proteins like interleukin A. This interleukin A will do what? It will activate neutrophils in the blood vessels. These, these neutrophils will come to the area and will destruct the cell membrane. There's also an increase of reactive oxygen species, ROS. These ROS will damage the cell membrane, proteins, and DNA. Let me tell you something really important. The PIP2 will also be broken down into arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid will eventually be broken down into thromboxan A2. This thromboxan A2 will cause vasoconstriction. This is the blood vessel. And the amount of oxygen will be decreased because the vessel is constricted and the small amount of blood is being transferred. So blood carries oxygen. So small amount of blood will lead to a small amount of oxygen transfer. So oxygen decreases, which is being delivered to the tissue cells. And decrease in oxygen will lead to decrease in ATP production. So when there will be decreased ATP, there will be less energy provided to different tissue cells. And eventually what will happen? Cell will die. Let's talk about the type 3 exotoxins. The type 3 exotoxin, cholera toxin, this is the bacteria that is responsible for releasing the type 3 toxin. This is the cholera toxin. And the cholera toxin produces its effects on the gastrointestinal system. This toxin is taken up by the AB toxin mode. Cholera toxin does what? It damages the intestinal cells and it leads to watery diarrhea in massive amounts, uh, which is rice water like stools. Let's talk about the mechanism of type 3 exotoxins. This is a zoomed enterocyte. Enterocytes are the cells of the intestine. On enterocytes, there are particular receptors just like that one. Uh, this toxin binds onto them, the AB toxin. There are two subunits of the cholera toxins, the A and the B. B is the binding unit that binds onto the receptor. So B is for binding and this is the B unit, so you can memorize just like that. And there's another unit, that's the A unit, that is the entering unit that enters into the cell. Let's assume that A subunit is not in the cell at the moment, and I'm talking about the normal situations. There's a G protein having GTP on it inside the cell membrane. It activates the adenylate cyclase, that is an enzyme. That adenylate cyclase will convert ATP into cyclic AMP, the cyclic adenomonophosphate. This cyclic AMP will activate the protein kinase A. This protein kinase A will phosphorylate chloride channels, and chloride will get out of the cell. Chloride channels are situated near the lumen of intestine. Normally, G protein is deactivated after the activation and vice versa. But when A subunit is inside the cell, this A subunit keeps the G protein activated. When G protein is activated, it will continuously activate the adenylate cyclase. And more ATP will be converted into more cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will activate more PKA protein kinase A. And there will be an increased phosphorylation of the chloride channel. So, the, so more chloride along with water will spill out of the cell. This will lead to what? This will lead to watery diarrhea. All right, guys, as a quick recap, exotoxins are toxins that are released by gram bacteria, both positive and negative. Their low concentrations are fatal as compared to endotoxins whose higher concentrations are fatal. They are responsible for damaging the cells in three different ways. By the type 1, by acting as a super antigen. Type 2 acts by damaging and forming pores in the cell membranes. And type 3 acts as a second messenger system. The AB toxin or injectosome. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you really did, give this video a big, big thumbs up. Com comment down below your suggestions. And also, if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I rarely upload blogs. So do check them out. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.